She's called Matilda. And this 11-week-old merino lamb is Australia's answer to another sheep called Dolly, the world's first cloned mammal. More than a scientific curio, what this young bundle of wool now represents is the very best of our hopes. I think the potential is to revolutionise the treatment of human disease. Diabetes, heart failure, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, uh, thalassemias and so on. But Matilda also represents the very worst of our fears. I think the fear factor is a human dolly. From the science of cloning animals comes the chance to rid humankind of some of its worst afflictions. But it's research that comes at a cost. One that will require Australians to carefully examine their own consciences. I think the public needs to be fully aware that what it means is the wholesale use and, in my uh, view, abuse of embryos. Tonight on Four Corners, the Clone Age. At his home in the Adelaide Hills, Lindsay Kremen wakes every morning to the knowledge the tremors are getting worse. Here at 5 AD, his movement more limited. We give you stress-free music all day, every day. All this I've, I've gone through the night without medication, so in the mornings I'm pretty well looking for it. It affects you um, every every part of the day. I mean, you get up in the morning and you want to have a shave or. Uh, you have your breakfast and uh, it's d and at that time when your medication is very low, uh, having not taken any during the night of course, it's, it's very hard to uh, control um, a spoon, a cup and uh, things of that nature. Lindsay felt the first twinges of Parkinson's disease ten years ago. A former police accident investigator with more than 30 years in the force he went from examining other people's disasters to experiencing one of his own. It eventually forced him from the job. I kept a pretty low profile for a number of years and uh, the, the tremor especially wasn't to the point where uh, it, was, it was that prominent, but as the years went by it obviously became worse and uh, I think uh, my workmates knew there was a, a problem there. Many of the nerve cells in Lindsay's brain have lost an important chemical called dopamine that controls movement, balance and coordination. The tremors and stiffness progressively worsen. If only the dead nerve cells in his brain could be replaced with new healthy cells, his future could be very different. Well, the contentious science of cloning may be able to do just that. Tucked away in the Barossa Valley, a little further up the road from Lindsay's place, is a farm. A farm where the sheep ain't all ordinary sheep. Well, she was last in the line of births, and kind of way I think I can confess and say that I'd given up hope of producing a healthy, live animal from that run. Matilda is a scientific first for Australia. One of two successful animal clones born days apart in April. Both modelled on the same cloning technology that created that other, more famous sheep, Dolly. How's she uh, treated around the farm? Oh, Sport rotten, of course, and she just loves this milk. Overweight and hungry. She's, she's made short work of that. <laughs> and that might be your last, too. Matilda will pave the way for breeding livestock with elite gene pools for the best wool, meat or milk. Quite a number of years ago, uh, we appreciated that the birth of Matilda had substantial potential in terms of not just livestock production, but in other areas, exciting areas like medical therapies and so on. 
from our point of view, we had uh, a commitment to the wool industry to develop these new technologies and to make them available to industry. And we saw that we had uh, almost a moral obligation to go out and develop this technology. The techniques that created her could be applied to any mammal, including man. A cell was taken from a lamb fetus, complete with its own DNA. An egg was taken from another sheep and the DNA removed. An electric current fused the cell with the egg and an embryo was created. That means when Matilda was produced, she was an exact copy of the DNA in the cell, a clone of the original fetus. Frankly, I see cloning, particularly in the medical areas, as being absolutely fantastic. It, it might well be to uh, sell degenerative diseases what immunisation did to infectious diseases. Perhaps the process that gave us Matilda could produce a human clone. But researchers have a very different target, tailor-made tissue, spare parts to replace all the diseased, ravaged areas of our bodies. Hearts, brains, livers, pancreas, blood and more. To tackle diseases for which there are no known cures. In effect, those applications are any disease which has as its basis the loss of cells, say diabetes, heart failure, um, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, thalassemias and so on. So-called therapeutic cloning is the science that may help Lindsay. We move from a world of treating disease with surgery and drugs to one where we use our own cells to heal our bodies. This is one of the most fundamental changes I suspect, most revolutionary changes I suspect, that's ever likely to have occurred in medicine in human history. It's uh, probably the race that's going on in uh, human medicine at the moment. The prize is enormous because of the wide-ranging uh, applications of this technology and, of course, the fact that it's treating what have previously been intractable diseases. There's already one type of cell replacement that could leap ahead with the help of therapeutic cloning. The beneficiaries, child victims of leukaemia, whose own bodies fight to reject the very bone marrow transplants that would save them. Melbourne teenager Wade Osborne is one of the lucky ones. He survived leukaemia diagnosed when he was just 10 years old. My back started playing up. My legs just clapped. Chemotherapy, though gruelling, seemed to work. I uh, just felt terrible all the time. He was in remission, I think, about 18 months. And uh, we went to the hospital just for a normal checkup one day and Wade had relapsed. It was like being hit by a freight train. How are you going? Wade's last option was a bone marrow transplant. To stop his body rejecting the donor bone marrow meant taking him to the brink of death and back again. It was the worst time watching him do every physical motion, vomiting, diarrhoea, shot up a morphine for about 12 days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to be absolutely honest, a child who goes through a bone marrow transplant goes to hell and back as a result of all of the combination of chemotherapy and immunotherapy and anti-rejection therapy. The children have to be taken to a point where their immune system is really knocked out in order to let them accept the bone marrow that's being given to them because it isn't identical to their own cells and so the body